So one of the important things is for us to test at operational conditions, those corner cases, before we field these systems to the warfighter. We want to make sure that if there's any issues, we find them in flight test before it's downrange and the operator's trying to use it. For the test that we did with F-16 versus the KC-46, it had a very complex crew. We had to have the test pilot in the KC-46, we had to have a test boom operator on the KC-46, and then also the flight test engineers. Their control room is actually on board the KC-46. From the receiver, we had the test pilot in the front seat of the F-16, flight test engineer in the back, taking the best notes, monitoring the conditions as we went in to try to get this very challenging condition. So when we are designing tests, we want to make sure that we test at operational conditions. That means that we want to make sure that our new systems have the capability that the warfighter needs. So some of the, some of the challenges in flight tests, uh, especially with the new uh, with KC-46 and being a remote vision system and then working on the remote vision system 2.0 upgrades, is finding the areas that are going to most stress the new camera system. We wanted to test this at night over the water with low luminosity, meaning that the moon had set and there was no light out there. This is a very challenging case for the cameras to be able to see a receiver aircraft. Pilots tend to like nighttime testing a whole lot because um, you're able to just focus on what's going on underneath your airplane and you don't have to worry about what else is going on like around you. Um, and also for the 46 at least, the lights are really, really good. Uh, so people really like refueling at nighttime. You're shooting for specific times that happen maybe once a month, a couple times, and so your windows for uh, flight tests are very limited. As a tester, we specifically target and, and challenge ourselves to find those worst case conditions of night, weather, uh, anything that kind of deviates from the norm of day-to-day -day refueling ops. Okay, so if I eject from the aircraft over the water, yes. I have this anti-exposure suit. Mm -hmm. Tell me, does it keep me dry? Does it keep me warm? Like, what is the purpose of this? Yes, it's uh, insulating your body from the cold temperatures. So it's going to protect you against uh, hypothermia while you're in the water waiting to get rescued. You would really want to wear a pair of ABGs in the jet at night because you have a big bubble canopy and nothing's going to be quicker than the human eye. So the most challenge would be with contact uncoupled because um, that receiver pilot has a very small window that he has to hold, and he's doing that throughout the entire uh, envelope. And let's say he goes left, uh, he's interacting with the wing tip board as he's off the tanker, um, and he's having centering forces that he has to fight to make uh, his way to the left. One of the things that I learned when we were designing this test was that a two-seat F-16, the D model, that has a pilot and an engineer in the back seat, at heavy weight is one of the more complex, challenging conditions for the KC-46. It's because of the geometry that the boom and that the receiver aircraft have to be at. I think of it like a dance because it's there's a lot of moving pieces in flight tests and everything needs to be synced up at the right time. So we partner with Boeing to do more 46 research and development and they bring a whole gamut of, uh, if you will, control room. 40 people on that day will touch the test, but hundreds of people throughout like the years of planning that it takes uh, to get a test off the ground will, will touch the test. So it's, it's huge teams that we're working with. And just getting that dance, and now, now we're just doubling the size of the dance that goes on for flight tests. It can be hectic, uh, but it's also very rewarding in what we can discover and create.